Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a great day today. And today we're taking a little road trip. And we're going to a Tesla supercharger. And the reason that's happening, and a couple of videos ago that I made, is a video on the Rivian update, uh, when they updated the, the Driver Plus system. I planned a trip in my trip planner and I happened to notice when I was watching the YouTube video that it had a Tesla supercharger on there. I was like, huh, oh, that's weird. Why would my first stop be a Tesla supercharger? Turn, come to find out it happened to be a Magic Dock. And that Magic Dock is located a little about, about 100 miles away from here. And so we're going to be driving towards there uh, to the Magic Dock. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the trip planned in here. And so the uh, trip is about 111 miles to the supercharger. And right now I'm charged up to 89%. And it's saying I should get about 300 miles of range. And so we're gonna kind of test the range out too. And I also have, I reset my trip meter and we're gonna check out the efficiency and see how accurate the, uh, the vehicle is as, as far as calculating the trip. And it is, the temperature right now is 37 degrees. So it is a little cold outside. And it should warm up a little bit today. But of course, uh, temperature affects range of the vehicle. But uh, that's not really the point of this vehicle. It's really going to be about these superchargers and if they're actually a solution or if it's just a band-aid uh, that may create a lot of problems that a lot of people have not considered yet. But uh, I'll get back with you a little bit once we get on this road trip. Okay, we should be getting close to the, the superchargers. Oh, they're located at a gas station. That's a good location. Now the only challenge is... Your destination is on the left. Finding a place to charge. Because I'm going to be taking up two charging locations. And that may upset some people, but we'll see. This is just part of the challenges of the supercharger network opening up to everyone. Okay, I have my uh, my Tesla app open up, and I'm going to try to charge my non-Tesla. And let's see, I'm and it's charged here, and let's see here, get started, unlock adapter. And I'm on one A, so I'm going to hit hit one A to get and get started. Oh, now add payment method, man. Come on, man, really? Yeah. So I just uh, I had to add my billing information to the app. Unfortunately, it wouldn't let me do it beforehand. I put this app on my phone yesterday, but it wouldn't give me an option to set it up. I wish it would have because I had to, I, I couldn't do it until I actually got to the dock. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and unlock the adapter and there's a kind of a button here you push. And it says undocked. And it unlocks. And as you can see, it has the, um, the CCS connectors right here and the J1772. And go ahead and flip this down. And we're gonna see what happens. And it looks to be charging. Let's see what other information we have. Let's go in here and take a look inside the vehicle. 
Yeah, the thing I like about this site is it, it's not blocking. I'm not blocking any charges. I don't think I am anyway, because wait a minute, maybe I am. I am blocking the charge. I'm blocking this charger right here. <laughs> so I am blocking the charger. So that's the uh, drawback that if someone else wanted to pull up, but it is quite a few empty ones here, maybe only one or two. But if you had a few more Rivians here, uh, they wouldn't be able to charge. And so let's just check the uh, charging speeds on here. And right now I'm pulling in 118 kilowatt hours, which is not that great, but my state of charge is, is at 46%. You know, so I'm at a relatively higher state of charge. And so we're just going to see what happens, you know, but not really pulling in that many kilowatts uh, because of there's three other cars here, three other Teslas charging right now. Yeah, I'm just see if I can pull up anything on this app, if it gives me any information here. And right now it's, it says charging in progress, 40%, 46% charge. And it gives my charge rate. What the heck was the cost? Did, okay. I'm not even sure how many, uh, what's the cost per kilowatt hour? It doesn't show. Let me show how much energy has been delivered, 3.768 kilowatt hours. Now it just jumped up to 120 kilowatts and charged me $1.96, so we'll see. Uh, we'll just sit here for a minute and get this vehicle charged up, probably only to around 70%, maybe not even that high. You know, when we got here, I still had about 150 miles of range, probably more than that. I didn't even look, but it was quite a bit. So, but I can probably find it on the camera, but he had quite a bit of range left still. More so than what it was projected on our arrival. Oh, now we're up to 147 kilowatts. So it's starting to ramp up even more. So that's pretty good, especially at this state of charge. And it connected pretty easy. This, this, this connected pretty easy. Instead of the only drawback, the major drawback I have is that I'm taking up more than one spot and then that makes me feel a bit, I won't say nervous, because, you know, if someone else pulls up and they need to charge, they won't be able to do it. And that, and right now we have a Mustang Mach-E pulling in, and he's gonna be taking up two spots also. So that vehicle's gonna be taking up two, two charging locations. And so now, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, uh, charging locations here but we're taking up two so only six cars to be able to charge i already disconnect and i talked to a few gentlemen down this way and you can see we have three nine tests so you have the chevy bolt right here and then you have a a ford Mox, mustang mach e and i just did just help that gentleman get his uh undock the the magic dock out but yeah you can see now we're we're taking up for each one of these cars, our ports on the front driver's side, and they're all taking up two spots. So, um, yeah, so it, that could create some potential issues for busy superchargers, especially if you have a bunch of Tesla showing up. And if they're looking into the apps and they're showing that there's an open spot and it's really not open because you have all these vehicles taking up two spots. So I'm not sure if Tesla has a, a, a fix for that, but we'll see. But as of right now, I'm going to and shut this, this session down. I'm just going to hit stop charging. And I can go ahead and unlatch. And that's it. And also, uh, so it just gives me a summary. They charge me $21. Uh, for this fee and add a 43 kilowatt hours into the into my uh into my rivian here and just some of the other issues you see here like the charge cord cord length you can see right here where they have to park really close and the same thing was with that mustang mach -E, they had the same issue as far as the charge cord but hopefully tesla tesla will be fixing that too so now I just want to wrap everything up with my experience of using the Tesla Supercharger Network for the first time. And I would have to say it was overall, it was a really good experience. 
And, you know, Tesla really did an outstanding job as far as laying out the network. Um, they knew they were producing electric vehicles, so they didn't wait around. Tesla knew they were going to have to build out the infrastructure, make it viable to sell electric vehicles across the United States and across the world. And so they built an outstanding uh, supercharger network. And I will have to say it was really easy connecting my vehicle up to it. And I like the location. It was located close to a, you know, right at a gas station where, you know, I can go in and get something to eat and use the bathroom if I need to. So I really did appreciate that. However, the biggest drawback for me was it, the, 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 I was taking up two spots using the supercharger charging network. And after this, I was quite nervous, uh, you had it there because I didn't know what the reaction was going to be from, any of the Tesla owners I've read through uh, some of these, uh, like the Reddit Tesla site. And I saw a picture of a Rivian once charging this Tesla supercharger. And it was, uh, let's see, it was not nice. Uh, the things that the people had to say about it. And they kind of surprised me. So you just never know how someone's going to react. And so that was, you know, a concern. And then plus how, I, how would I react to someone's reaction to me? So, and I just want to kind of avoid any type of confrontation when I'm just trying to put some electricity in my vehicle. I just don't, it's, to me, it's unnecessary, but I was quite nervous, uh, about, that was a big concern of mine. And it, I, I did take up two spots. And when I got there, obviously you saw the video, there was more than one vehicle, um, uh, that was taken up two spots just while I was there was three. And then as soon as I pulled off a, another Rivian R1S pulled up, which again was taking up two spots. So hopefully that's something Tesla can fix along with the length of their cords. You know, if they can, the, the cables, if they can make a longer cable at these V3 chargers, that can help alleviate that. Of course, then they have to fix it, the, uh, the parking lane situation to where it's more in the middle instead of off to the side. So there's a few things that Tesla can do that would not be a high cost to them or to work, make it feasible to where, uh, you know, people are still being able to charge their vehicles without being blocked. So, but that was a, the huge concern of mine. And also, uh, this supercharger is more expensive to use than uh, Electrify America or EVgo. Uh, this particular station was charging me 49 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, you can purchase a plan in, for around $13 a month to get that down to 37 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, which would be kind of on par with a little more expense, expensive still than a, a EVgo or Electrify America. So that is a, a, something you have to keep in mind that if you're using these stations, you may end up having to pay just a little more than you would using uh, one of the other third-party charging networks. Another small thing is that you probably get slower charging speeds out from the Tesla supercharger network because they do load sharing, whereas... These other charging stations that are, especially the ones that are going in now under the NEVI funding, part of the NEVI funding requirement is that there is no load sharing and that uh, the vehicles have to get at least 150 kilowatts uh, of electricity, you know, if it's split between uh, two vehicles, which means each charging station or or has a put out at least 350 kilowatts. So that is one change. And, and then also if you have an 800 a vehicle that's on an 800 volt platform, like a, a Kia or even a Tesla Cybertruck, uh, you're not going to get those charging speeds. And so you may want to consider going to uh, EVgo, Electrify America, or either one of these other competitors to get those faster charging speeds. So with that, that's it. You know, I thought it was a good experience. Uh, I'm going to be headed to a Nevi funding station that has opened up in Warrington, Missouri to, to check that out and just kind of do a compare and contrast uh, between this, the, the Tesla superchargers and also the brand new Nevi funding stations that's going in. And so that should be my next video. So go ahead and look out for that. So this opening the supercharger network to everyone to all vehicles, does that help solve the charging problems in the United States? And I'm going to go back to my original question where I said, is this a solution or is it a band-aid? 
And for what I've seen so far, this is a band-aid. It does not solve the problem. And as far as I'm concerned, using the supercharger network would not be my first option, but it's a great backup. So uh, because who knows if these third-party stations are going to be working. Uh, but one of the, the good, the bright spots is that a lot of new charging stations are going in under NEVI funding, and they're required to have up to the 96% uptime. And that's a part of the requirements. So hopefully now that people see there's a profit that can be made off of charging vehicles, because more and more people are purchasing electric vehicles, regardless of what you see in the news. Uh, this was a record year for electric vehicle sales. There were over a million sold already. Uh, I think probably by the end of the third quarter. So um, yeah, this, so now it's an uh, opportunity for companies to make a lot of money. But I just wanted to drop in and give you my thoughts on that. And I also like to know what you think. So go ahead and in the comment section, and let, let me know what you think about the supercharger network opening up and what are some challenges that you think can be presented with a network opening up, you know, to current Tesla owners or non Tesla owners like myself. But yeah, just go ahead and comment. And if you don't mind, just go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And I really appreciate it. And but that's all I have for today. I'd like to thank you for joining me again. And I can't wait to see you on the next video.